Good morning, hello everybody, welcome back to another vlog. I hope you are doing well, do let me know how you are down in the comments. And welcome to spring, we have officially hit the spring equinox and I don't know about you guys but I am definitely feeling it. I feel my mood lifting as we head into a new season that's just full of growth and colour and it's been super sunny up here in Scotland and I think in a lot of the UK as well. So I have definitely felt my mood lifting and I hope the same can be said for you but also because I I'm managing to get my life a little bit more together. Not that it was in a particular mess in the first place, but with spring, I kind of take it upon myself to have an almost ritual spring clean. So this will be a clean that is beyond like my day-to-day -day cleaning. This includes me going through everything I own and basically having a clear out if necessary, basically deconstructing my entire flat to do a really deep clean of the places that don't usually get seen and things like that. So that has been taking place over the course of a couple of weeks. And also just in general, I have finally, finally managed to reset my morning routine. Oh my goodness, if you have been following my videos for any amount of time, then you may have heard me saying for probably a year now that I have been trying to reset my morning routine and it was really bothering me that I was struggling to do it so much. We've finally done it. I am currently filming this at 8 a.m. I've already been awake for an hour. I'm put together, I, I just, I'm thriving. <laughs> I am going to put that down because I feel like we have far too much energy this morning to be waving around a coffee cup, but I'm so pleased to have finally reset that part of my routine at least because I'm getting so much more reading done. My mood is generally better because as I've always said, if I have time to actually wake up and almost solidify my own mood before I have to deal with other people's through work and things like that, then I just... The day goes a lot better, so I am super pleased with that. I am a little bit wary, we have the clocks changing, so it may end up being a bit skewed again, but I am determined to keep it because this is this is the outcome. So yeah, I just thought I would give you a little bit of an update of where I'm at going into spring. Even though I am very much an autumn child, I love autumn and everything it brings, I do appreciate every single season for different reasons, so this is what I like about spring. It just feels like there's new energy in the world, everyone starts lifting their mood and things like that. So we're feeling good, we're feeling good. So I thought that for this vlog, we're gonna have a bit of a witchy theme because there is a witch market happening. I have witchy reads on the go and headed into spring or Ostara as it is in the wheel of the year, then it has me doing a few more things to kind of just renew my space and things like that. So why not just vlog all of that? <laughs> So to get into this vlog, I do actually have some reading updates already because I decided to read Hex by Jenny Fagan, which is only about 100 pages long, and it's inspired by a period of Scottish history focusing in around one very famous woman who was accused of witchcraft called Gailis Duncan, and a lot of people know of her because she is mentioned in Outlander. But Jenny Fagan takes her story and weaves together a modern and also a historical timeline. So we see a woman who is a witch within modern day, I think it's in 2021, maybe 2020, and we see her travel back in time to visit Gailis Duncan on her final night. And, oh, this book. I don't currently have it because I raved about it and one of my friends was just like, I need to read it. So I was like, here, take it take the book. So I don't have my physical copy with me, but oh my god, this book was heartbreaking. I read it in one sitting. Jenny Fagan just does such a good job at setting the scene and the sort of thoughts and conversations you might be having within your final few hours. <laughs> um, this book just feels like a huge countdown and it's really solemn. We have the two women talking about what things are like in the future and how women are still persecuted for a lot of things, how there's still a power imbalance, how there's still a society ruled by misogyny, and it's not even necessarily a story of hope, it's just saying it how it is, and <laughs> it's so sad. I just, oh my god, I finished reading this book and genuinely felt like I was grieving for so many women who I don't know, and it was such a powerful little book. I cannot get over how much I felt for it, like, <laughs> The writing style as well was really interesting. It wasn't particularly like flowery or it wasn't straight up. It was kind of a mix of both. It was a really interesting style, especially because you were taking a mix of modern day and historical context and language. So I just, oh. 
there's not too much I can say about this book because it is just a hundred pages long but wow does it have an impact. I don't think this story, this book will be leaving my brain for a very long time and I have since gone and bought more books by Jenny Fagan because I was just like who if she can do that much within a hundred pages what can she do with a whole novel. If you have any interest in witchcraft read this book my god. But then I am also a really decent way into another book which is The Witches of New York by Amy McKay. And again I am loving this book. I am having such a good time at the minute with my occultish reads. <laughs> so this one is set in the 1880s in New York and we're based around a tea shop run by two women called Adelaide Tom and Eleanor St. Clair. But as you might imagine this isn't just any tea shop because people quite often visit to do some more like secret cures and just some more interesting conversations over tea you know. But one day a girl called Beatrice Dunn joins them as an apprentice and at first they're not quite sure what to do with her, they're not really too open to this idea of introducing someone else to how they work and things like that because magic isn't widely accepted, it's still kind of a conflicting thing amongst society. You either really despise it and hate it and reject it or you are fascinated and kind of question a lot of things. So they weren't too sure about accepting her in but it's very clear that she has some kind of magical ability and so they do accept her in and strange things start happening from there. As if things weren't already a little bit strange at least but I am just loving this book. I love the writing style of it but I can't explain why it almost just seems a little bit quirky without being forced. It's just magical things are mentioned as if it's just like a oh yeah that happens whereas to everybody else that would be like a massive shocking thing. But I feel like all the way through you really get the sense of an acceptance of magic but also a wariness to be too showy about it. They don't really want to advertise that this is a thing because there's danger that comes with that. And as I've been reading this book that kind of hesitation, that danger has been lurking in more and more because we now have a man coming in who is taking it upon himself to rid the world of witches and just kind of spread that sort of hatred towards women. But it's also just really lovely to read about Adelaide, Eleanor and Beatrice and kind of their circle, their interactions, their relationships with each other because I don't think it's the sort of friendship that you see too often in books and there's a lot to be said about showing a friendship that isn't perfect perfect about showing people whose interests do have a conflict in some areas but still manage to be friends. People who don't necessarily agree with how one person leads their life in certain aspects but can accept it because it's not a make or break deal in their friendship and I just think that it's really pure to see that within a book. And all of these women have completely different situations so Eleanor's a little bit older, I can't remember what age it said that she was but she's older, she's always just accepted witchcraft, it's always been a thing for her and she has also been involved in sapphic relationships so she has this other thing that she's kind of hiding from society and is having a bit more hesitation towards what she shows of herself to the general public. I think Adelaide is about 10 years younger than she is so she would be somewhere within her 20s but she has been disfigured because someone threw I think some kind of like acid at her face and so she's only got one eye and so she's dealing with that amongst society but she sees witchcraft as a thing she uses but she doesn't call herself a witch like she just thinks that she is good at observation and making educated guesses basically but she doesn't oppose it either she's just kind of like I mean it's whatever I don't know how far I believe this and then we have Beatrice who is like fresh off the bat she is I think 19 years old and she's just eager to learn everything she didn't quite call herself a witch beforehand but now it's very clear that weird things are happening and it's just really nice to see them all interact and go into these situations with such different perspectives but not have that be a make or break deal so I really love this book I am enjoying it so much I've read 300 pages without even barely blinking an eye and I'm actually hoping to finish this today. I still have about 200 pages left but as I said I'm getting through it really quickly so loving this. I am also reading, I will quickly mention it, let me grab it. The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is the Fairy Loot edition and I'm so glad to have a matching set of these books especially so beautiful as well. This is just 
I cannot get over these designs. If I remember, I'll show you the full set later in this video, but I am also currently reading The Diviners, which again has supernatural occultish themes. This is an occult murder mystery set in 1920s New York, and I just... I've been putting off reading this because I had a suspicion that I would absolutely adore it and I didn't want to be wrong, but it is now my Patreon book club pick for March and April and I have actually decided to make that into a little like Patreon read along. So if you are part of my Patreon, do check that out and see more information about that because we will be reading all of these alongside the usual book club. But I started this during our Patreon sprints earlier this week and I am about 164 pages in. I love this. I am obsessed. The audiobook for this is incredible. I'm so glad I listened to the audiobook because I think that just gives it the vibe. <laughs> like I would not have been able to make the 1920s American lingo work in my head as well as the audiobook does. So definitely recommend that. But I'm just obsessed. I'm obsessed with this already. I really think that this could be a new favourite. I'm not going to finish it within this vlog. I am doing a dedicated vlog for my patrons on this book, but this will be included within my March wrap up too. So I'll keep you updated on that there. But yeah, I just, I have so many good witchy books right now that I don't really know what to do with myself because I'm like, I love everything. <laughs> and it's been such a long time since that has happened, that I'm really just trying to lean into it and take it all in. So uh, we're having a good time at the minute with all of the witchy stuff and I'm happy to share that with you guys too. I also just wanted to say a quick thank you for all of the really kind comments on my last vlog. I didn't expect so many people to relate to the things I was saying within that video, but it was really lovely just to hear your stories, your words of support and things like that. So thank you for that. And hopefully you can continue watching these videos and take what you need from them. And as I said, I hope you're heading into spring with a good mind set and yeah let's uh reset ourselves for spring <laughs> so this is the diviner set as a whole and just look how stunning they are does that not just scream the 1920s oh my god so as i've just shown you we do have the diviners but then we also have lair of dreams before the devil breaks you and of course the King of Crows. Look at the foiling. Oh, I am obsessed. So pleased with those. They are my current obsession. <laughs> it is the day of the witch market and I don't think I have ever been so excited about a market before. Genuinely feels like Christmas. I follow most of the vendors on Instagram and seeing their Instagram stories saying that they're on their way and setting up has just got me so excited. So I'm just about to leave and have a wonderfully witchy day. <laughs> this is the outfit I'm wearing. I have been loving wearing this because it's just so easy, so comfortable. Just my cardigan that I always wear and this very flowy skirt. We love it. So I'm back from the witch market and honestly, 
one of the best days I've had in a while. I feel like my entire soul was just laid bare and I went ham in the witch market. I spent a lot of money. I knew I would. I have been holding back on buying certain things because I knew the witch market was happening and so I wanted to buy them there. Things like replacing jewellery that I wear every day and just generally a few little bits and bobs that I've been wanting to pick up. But I did also end up picking up some storage. <laughs> I'll explain because on our way back from the witch market we went into a few charity shops and in one of them I came across this <laughs> which is a very excessive wooden trunk but I have been looking for one of these for a good few months now, mainly because I needed some storage for random bits and bobs, mainly things that you would associate with witchcraft. And so when I saw this in a charity shop, I just had a minor freak out because these things are expensive. And here it was, just casually sat there waiting. And so I now have this absolutely beautiful chest that I can put all of my witchy stuff in and I am so thrilled. So that just needed to happen, but I did also buy a lot within the actual market itself. Now this market I believe will be there for every seasonal festival within the Wheel of the Year. And I have absolutely no doubt that I will go again. I doubt that I will buy this much again, but this was the first time I went. And like I said, I did go there with the intention of buying quite a few things to replace. But I did also just get very excited about having so many like independent small witchy businesses in one place. It was just perfect. I absolutely loved it. It was two floors as you will have seen and and yeah, I just had a lot of excitement in my system. So let's do a little bit of a witchy haul. I am just gonna pull stuff at random from this box because there is no rhyme and reason to it. And I'll leave the details for the shops down in the description box because I do have little business cards for them all and I'm gonna kind of have to match up the business cards to the items that I've got. So I'll leave a link to all of the shops because I'm pretty sure most of them, if not all of them, do have online stores as well. So you definitely should go and check them out. But yeah, let's just get into it. So we'll start off with some crystals. I don't typically buy crystals all too often. I do have a lot of them, but I haven't bought any in a while, but these ones just caught my eye and it had to be done. So we have this one, which is a pink amethyst. And I really love this because it's kind of like a, a raw crystal, but you can see where it's naturally formed a point inside, which I just thought was really cool. And I've never seen a rose amethyst before. I have a lot of amethysts, but not a rose one. So yeah and i did also pick up this tiger's eye which as you can see you can see all of the different layers inside and it's just absolutely beautiful this one again was one that i picked up and was like you are coming home with me you're about to see as well that i do have a thing for tiger's eye because it features in a few things that i bought next up we have some tea this one is called ground this one has chamomile skull cap valerian licorice and cinnamon inside so i'm gonna have a cup of this tonight and see what it's like but this one is said to relax soften and soothe this is what it looks like inside i then picked up this tiger's eye necklace which i don't usually lean towards these kind of necklaces but this one i was just really drawn to again i absolutely love tiger's eye look at the colors it's absolutely beautiful and i think that this would go really well with another necklace that i got which is one that i specifically went looking for <laughs> this one which again is tiger's eye and I just think that this is so beautiful and this is the one that I went looking for because my tiger's eye crystal necklace that I usually wear just seems to have gone a little bit funky. I don't know what type of metal it is but I need to see if I can make it better by polishing it, seeing if it's just tarnished or whether it is actually damaged or what but either way it's not very good to wear anymore because it will kind of leave marks behind and stuff. And so I wanted a sterling silver necklace that had a very similar style and I figured this one would be it and I thought that these two would look so pretty together. I just know that this is about to become the necklace that I wear on a 24 hour basis so very glad to have found the replacement. This is one as well where I saw the vendor share a photo of it on Instagram beforehand and I was like if I see that necklace there I'm buying it and I did. <laughs> we have some incense because of course we do. This one is in a really cool jar of sorts. <laughs> I have some wax melts. One of my favourite things is this sun catcher. I cannot wait to hang this up. This is just resin with leaves inside and it's got these beautiful little crystals. 
but I'm so excited to hang this in my window and let it do its work. It's just so beautiful. I didn't expect to find anything like this while I was there, but I'm really glad I did. <laughs> Another thing that I bought as a replacement for some jewelry that I had are these hoop earrings. So I've been looking for some earrings to wear as like my day-to-day -day earrings that would be bigger hoops than what I've got in now. And these caught my attention because they are hoops with a crystal on them. I can't remember what type of agate this is, but I'll put it on the screen. But these are just absolutely beautiful and I cannot wait to wear them pretty much every single day. <laughs> and then finally, I picked up some reading supplies because I picked up this magazine, which is a Peculiar Parish magazine. This just looks really cool. So I do have a really small collection of kind of witchy folklore related magazines. So I've got Cunning Folk, which is quite a popular one. I've got that here. And I've been looking into more of them, but this one just looks really, really cool, not only because of the design, but inside, as you flick through, it's got little things that you can pull out. So this is actually a vinyl single, so you can play it on a vinyl record player. I don't have one, but I have heard what the song is because we played it while we were at Jean's flat. But I just thought that was really cool and it does have a whole bunch of other stuff inside as well. So you have like stickers and things tucked inside and this just looks incredible. I cannot wait to read this. There's so much inside. You've got a whole bunch of illustrations and different articles and things. I'm so excited to delve into this further. I just think it looks so, so cool. Yeah, it's just a bunch of articles and short stories and things by the look of it. So excited to have a read through that. And then a couple of books which I picked up from Lighthouse Books, which is a bookstore that is in Edinburgh that I showed in one of my Come Book Shopping With Me videos. So I'll leave a link to that down below if you want to have a look at the actual bookstore. But they had a stall with all of their witchy stock, basically. And so I decided to pick up The Man in Tree Witches by A.K. Blakemore. This is one which I've been debating whether I want to read for a very long time and I finally decided that I do in fact want to read it so I pretty much zoned in on that book when I saw it on their stand. This one is set in England 1643. Puritanical fervour has gripped the nation. In Manning Tree, depleted of men since the Civil War began, women are left to their own devices and Rebecca West chafes against the drudgery of her days but when Matthew Hopkins arrives asking bladed questions and casting damning accusations, mistrust and unease seep into the lives of women. Caught between between betrayal and persecution, what must Rebecca West do to survive? Very excited to read that. We all know I love witchy stories. And then I did actually pick up a non-fiction, which, wow, is glowing on camera. <laughs> but this is In Defense of Witches, Why Women Are Still on Trial by Mona Chalet. Chalet? I don't know too much about this one besides what the title says, but apparently this links witchcraft with modern day witchcraft as well. People who show their craft on Instagram, teach classes, that sort of thing. And so it links that sort of thing with historic witchcraft and how they are both perceived within society and history and things. So very excited to give this one a read too. So yes, quite the, uh, quite the haul, but I can't say I'm mad about it. My bank account may be crying, but my soul is very happy. So <laughs> they have all come back to a very loving home and I just, like I said, had a great day around lots of like-minded people. So I'm gonna pack this all away into my trunk now. <laughs> I feel so extra having a whole trunk, but I am going to find new homes for all of my goodies and then probably do some tidying of the flat after I've had a bit of a rest because I'm exhausted. <laughs> Good morning, my loves. It is now Friday morning. This vlog is actually meant to be going up today, so whether that happens or not will be another matter, but if not today, it will be up tomorrow. I didn't really do too much yesterday. I just went on a lunchtime walk. I did end up meeting a lovely subscriber. Clara, if you're watching this, it was lovely to meet you. I am sorry that I couldn't chat for longer because I was heading home to go back to work, but it was lovely meeting you and I hope you have enjoyed the rest of your trip. But that really made my day and then the rest of the day was just pretty chilled. Feeling pretty good this morning. I've just set up to start work in a few minutes. Got my coffee ready to go. I also have a smoothie, which I have been loving recently. Not like that specific smoothie, but just smoothies in general. I recently got a Nutribullet because I just don't really do breakfast, but I wanted some way of like making sure I'm getting enough fruit and veg and all that fun stuff. So it's been a little bit of a savior. I have been loving this. This one just has raspberry, strawberry, spinach, maca powder, 
apple and coconut milk. No specific measurements, I just shove things in and hope for the best, basically. And yeah, I'm here to tell you that I did finish reading The Witches of New York last night and I rated it four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. I feel like this is quite a slow one because it does have quite a few different subplots. Every character's got something else going on besides the main plot that ties them all together. But I also read it really quickly and I don't know if that's because I listened to the audiobook or what it was, but it did definitely pick up pace after a certain point because we did follow the course of history when it came to witches, people fearing witchcraft and women suffering the brunt of that. So we did see some elements of that as well while also keeping it low-key fantasy and I just, I really loved it. I feel like this was done so well. I feel like I read somewhere that this author has written another book and one of the characters in this is featured in that book from before this book took place but I don't know, I, I don't know anything more about that. I'm gonna go and have a look a little bit later today but if so I will probably pick up that book and also just anything else that Amy McKay has written because I really enjoyed this. I feel like it was the exact witchy vibe that I have been looking for and I'm really glad that I did kind of indulge in that. I did just abandon the TBR for March to read witchy books and uh, I don't regret anything because I had a great time so very glad to have read that. I did want to read another book in this vlog but I just wasn't quick enough so I will probably continue the witchy reading because I've really got like a feel for it now so I will of course keep you updated although if you do want kind of live updates on what I'm reading then Goodreads is probably the place to go because I do keep that updated but otherwise I think that will be it for this video so I hope you enjoyed it if you've made it this far into it then leave a sunshine emoji because it has been lovely and sunny every single day here in Edinburgh so let's indulge in that a little bit more but for now I shall love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here if you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so down the description box you'll find information to all the books I've mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!